ニューバッジポッケ二十三でさ、二億円やばくないあ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、ちょ、Imagine you're 18 with no skills, no education, stuck in a dead end job, and someone told you that you needed to make a million dollars in a year. Where would you get the money from? For Watanabe Mai, the answer was obvious. From men, of course. <laughs> Mai developed an incredibly effective method for scamming money out of lonely men and released it as a guide to help other women get rich too. Her tactics spread like wildfire on social media, but then the cops got wind of it. Mai's magic system is genius, and I'm gonna go through all of it. Why、well, is it gonna just say it? It's unethical and illegal. That's why I've rebranded it to the Scammer System. <laughs> Pay attention so you don't become a victim, and obviously, do not use it. Okay. All right, gang, listen up. The first thing you have to do is S. Select your target. Not every guy is a good target, so if you don't choose the right ones, well, you're I mean, gonna waste a lot of time. Broke losers are out. <laughs> you gotta find a guy who's good at making money but bad at holding on to it. That's exactly right. The perfect mark is a guy who. Just go to the casino then. I mean, chat, if you go to the casino, then you see people all,、uh, all the time. People like me. Who's lonely, isolated, and has no hobbies. A guy who has no meaning in life, who's not fulfilled. Ideally, he has nobody who relies on him and no interactions with women. The reason Mai knows this is the best type of man to target is because she used to work in what the Japanese call the night industry, if you know what I'm saying. One evening, she desperately texted every guy on her contact list asking for money, and the only reply she got was from the loneliest, most unfulfilled guy she knew. Okay, when it comes chat, to the kind of chat, you want to know something? Okay, I'm not proud of this, okay, but in Vegas, chat, listen, I thought to myself, okay, I never gonna go to, I never want to go to the strip club, okay, but I, I got dragged into it one, one time, okay, um, and something I noticed is that the girls are incredibly apt. They're socially, like, fucking, they're really, really good. So I gotta be honest, I gotta, even though, even though you can be really strong, right, I can see how some men could fall for that, definitely, 100%. And they get, they get, like, they get rolled, they get manipulated a bunch. I can definitely see it though, because I, as I noticed the girls are chat. Listen, I get it for their job, but they're incredibly good. When it comes to the kind of guy you should avoid, my recommend staying away from playboys and f boys, the kind of guys who are self centered and only interested in a physical relationship. As I mentioned earlier, you want a guy who's unfulfilled and lonely. It's true. So you should avoid guys who have a fulfilling life. I didn't get finessed. Well, I did, but not that time. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding.、Uh... And you gotta avoid guys who are full of themselves. Guys who flash money around may seem like ideal targets, but they're savvy and self centered, making them difficult to manipulate. Now that you've selected your target, it's time to see. Cultivate trust. If he doesn't trust you, why would he give you money? So you gotta make him trust you. The best way to do that is to make him feel like you're his girlfriend. That means texting him all the time, every day when you wake up, throughout the day, before you go to sleep. You need to make him feel like he's special to you. Chat, that's playing the long, long game. You just like that, no, 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 chat. Listen, another thing I noticed with chat from the, from the strip club, some of the girls try to fucking yoink now, right? Some of them try to yoink later, like long game. There's this one girl, she played the long, long game. She tried it. She tried it. I could tell she's playing the, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't give a fuck. She's trying to, not to get paid now or later. She's trying to go for the long, long of the like, oh, no, I don't care about any of that. Like, we could just be friends type shit. And then, I, of course, it's probably gonna be a max win down the line type shit. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> the next thing you gotta do is learn everything about him. Stuff like what time no, does he wake up? I didn't know this, son. I didn't know. What does he do on his days off? What was his childhood like? If you skip this step and try to extract money without making him fully trust you, he'll get suspicious and See, he will fail. That's a long line right there. Mai gives examples of her favorite messages to use on guys. Stuff like, messaging you first thing in the morning has become the highlight of my day, and 
It feels so nice to say goodnight to you. Okay, now that you've got him to trust you, it's time for the fun part. Extracting cash. Yeah! To do this, we will start by A, arousing concern. Basically, you need to make him think that you're in danger and that the solution is for him to give you some money. Mai refers to this part as casting no a spell on him. You're a complete sociopath. Don't interrupt. To start, abruptly stop texting him for two, three, or even four days. He'll get worried about you and probably spam you with messages. Don't open them. Hold out. Once he's ready, find a time when you think he's home and ready to have a conversation. Say something like, I'm sorry I didn't message you, but I was too embarrassed to tell you what I've been dealing with. I'm being chased by debt collectors. Don't elaborate. Make him ask for details and slowly trickle them out to him. Make sure you're ready with your story. Prepare all the specific details beforehand. No way that works. Example, so way too early. I'm behind on rent. He'll say, since when? Two months ago. Why haven't you paid? The economy, medical bills, whatever. What happens if you don't pay? I could get evicted or my parents might find out. If you've done things correctly, you now have a trusting guy who's sympathetic to your financial troubles. Now, is it time to ask him for money? No, 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 no. Actually, Mai never directly asks for money. Instead, the next step is to mention solutions that don't really solve the problem. These are things like, I've been talking to someone who says he'll lend me the money, but he's connected to the Yakuza. Obviously, your guy doesn't want you to get money from the Yakuza, but he's probably not ready to pay yet. So his first instinct will be to come up with Jesus. all kinds of solutions that get him off the hook. Things like, what have a you considered jump. speaking to a lawyer? Or, have you asked your parents for help? He's like a worm trying to wriggle away. Anticipate these questions and be ready with... Yo! Ah, oh, man, I'm over it. Who did that? This is an ambush, wasn't it? Yeah, that was an ambush, wasn't it? Because this whole thing was an ambush, you should be watching the fucking part of the video. Guys, this whole thing was an ambush, wasn't it? With answers for help? He's like a worm trying to wriggle away. Anticipate these questions and be ready with answers. Things that make him feel bad, like... Lawyer? I told you about this because I trust you. I don't want to tell somebody else about this. Or... Go to my parents. They hate me. I ran away from home, remember? At this point, if you've done everything right and he trusts you, he will offer to pay your debt. Mai has a rule where you have to refuse the first time, but eventually give in and accept his money. Success! <laughs> that warm guy doesn't get you down. But it's not over yet. The next part is crucial. You need to make him feel like a hero. Mai calls this part aftercare. It doesn't. And she stresses, seriously, look how many extra characters she added here for emphasis, that this aftercare is the most important step. You need to make him feel like a white knight who saved the princess. Say things like, Thank you so much. You've given me a place to sleep tonight. Give him a breakdown of exactly how you spent the money. Hint at your bright romantic future together and tell him what horrible things might have happened if it wasn't for him. If I hadn't met you, I might be dead right now. Or, you saved my life. Please don't ever leave me. You need to make. Chad, doesn't doesn't this set up an expectation that the guy needs to get a reward for that? I feel like if if you if she kind of balances this shit like that, the guy will feel like he did something and there's an imbalance of where he needs to get something back from it. Make sure that he feels warm and fuzzy about giving you the money. If you skip this step, who knows what could happen? But if you did it correctly, this sets you up in perfect position to end or repeat. If Mai thinks the guy doesn't have any more cash left, or if she's put him in too much debt already, she'll try to let the conversation die out and move on to the next guy. But most of the time, if you wait a few weeks or months, you can loop back to the start and try to get money from him all over again. Mai says most of her targets pay her more than once. <laughs> Chat, but this, it says that the police got to this strategy or whatever. Isn't it just the modern world though? It's not much of a crime here, I think. She even has a guy who buys her the new iPhone every year. In her four-year career, it's likely that Mai scammed over 2 million US dollars from desperate men. And she was proud of it, too. Mai didn't hide her lifestyle at all. She even brought 60k in cash to this interview. 
The interviewer is a massive Japanese YouTuber, and the reason it happened at all is because she's a fan of his and was spamming him for attention. He asked really good questions, and she ended up looking pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, it depends how the gift tax are over there, right? Chat, some countries have like gift, gift tax and whatnot. And I think if we're like family members and shit and like people, you can dodge it somehow, right? No? Oh shit, I'm going to jail. I'm just going to jail. <laughs> Afterwards, she threatened to go to the cops if he released it, but he released it anyways. Giga Chad. Why did Mai want to be in the public eye so badly? Perhaps she just wanted attention. attention. But there was another reason. The guide we went through earlier, she was selling it for $300 a pop, and business was booming. Yeah, but also though, I feel like some guy's gonna like that. They have like some, some guys, sometimes, guys, some people have like, uh, uh, like cash cow fetishes or whatever, pay pigs or whatever. They like to be like, uh, well, that's just me. You guys, it might pay pig. Uh. But there was another reason. The guide we went through earlier, she was selling it for $300 a pop, and business was booming. This was the beginning of the end for Mai. Remember when I mentioned that aftercare is the most important part? Another reason for this is because guys who feel scammed go to the cops. Unfortunately for Mai, some of her students must have skipped that chapter, specifically 19-year-old convenience store employee Ieda Miku, who, after buying Mai's guide, scammed around $100,000 out of two men by lying that she was going to be forced to appear in a certain kind of video if they didn't help her. After they paid her, she didn't do any aftercare. In fact, you could say she did negative aftercare. To both men, she sent a message, Miku has been kidnapped, and blocked them. And Whoa. when two men- Whoa! Okay, well, okay, hold up. It's a whole different ball game, though! Bring such an absurd story to the Nagoya police within one month, they start to connect the dots. They quickly tracked down and arrested Miku, found the guide on her phone, and then arrested Mai for aiding and abetting. This put Mai's face on the news, which made quite a few of her past victims realize they were scammed and go to the cops. Because guys were finally coming forward, they- Dude, dude, she finds an actual white knight, and if she gives him an actual problem, he can be the white knight in with a loose end. What do you think is gonna happen? The white knight will go for it every time. He's gonna wanna be the hero and fucking go for it and go, Yo, dude, this is happening. And- We're able to arrest gonna, Mai two more times like over this. the next couple months. One of the most interesting things they found after arresting her is that she never had any savings. She was essentially living paycheck to paycheck. Well, other people's paycheck to paycheck. Every month, she was spending all of the money she received. On what, you might ask? Host clubs. A host club is a place where women pay for the company of charming men. Hosts give them attention and entertain them with conversation and alcohol in a controlled social setting. Host clubs can be- Wait, so she stabilizes the economy. So she, yoink, she yoinks from lonely people and to act lonely and pay to get out of loneliness. Hold up. This is a whole cycle. Cheap if you go once in a while. The first visit is- Chat, I'm telling you, Chad, the only body who always wins out of anything is the fucking government and the banks. A charges goes through this, this fucking host shit, you pay taxes on it. Boom. They get the money, they're taxed on it. Government. Everything in transactions, it equals the zero, but taxes on the way in and out. It's heavily discounted, but if you become a regular, they're really expensive. <laughs> In Mai's case, she was a bit more than a regular. <laughs> she fell in love with a host, specifically this guy, and spent so much money at <laughs> the club. The staff started calling her Mother oh, Teresa. The only reason Mai started scamming was host clubs. Before host clubs, Mai was just a normal student with a part-time job. Host clubs made her want money, which is why she got into night work. That still didn't make enough, so she started scamming her clients. In the end, host clubs were her downfall. Even when she was making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, she was living in capsule hotels, so she had more money to spend at the host club. 
On October 27th, Mai was in the news again, the fourth time in two months. But this time, it wasn't her being arrested, it was her host and his manager. They were arrested for knowingly receiving dirty money from Mai. But how can they prove the hosts knew the money was dirty? Yeah, what? How about a text message found on Welcome Mai's phone the from the host saying, I am your accomplice now, I'll be arrested with you. Speaking of this host guy. Okay, chat, I think this is like a, so this video feels like there's a billion details that are missing. Because none of this shit makes sense. I guess I, it feels so weird to. No, there's a bunch of missing parts of this. Everyone's it's, talking about this fish shaped kettle of his. Apparently, he bought it for. A text doesn't really mean much. A text like that doesn't mean anything. I, like, there's like a billion defenses against that. Ah, for like $25 on Amazon. No fucking and served ads. my soft drinks wow, in it. For this luxurious service, he charged her around $100,000. On November 3rd, Mai appeared in court. Her appearance had changed a lot, and she was wearing glasses. She pled guilty to both aiding the scams with the guide and the scams that she did herself. The Happy only new information we learned during the trial is that she has a husband who's Vietnamese. She hasn't been sentenced yet, and there's another trial coming in December. Uh. Uh. Well, I mean, lady... She just, she just admitted to tax fraud and multiple scam schemes. Like, what the fuck? I think it's just one person to be like, okay, let's just investigate this and GG. Like, it just takes one person. You know, I've actually worked at a host club. I made a bonus video where I tell that story and talk a bit about the channel and why the videos take so long. It's free on my Patreon. You don't have to sign up. Link in the description. Check it out. Also, what the fuck is going... What is going on? This video went sideways like four times. Is it? What the fuck?